Welcome to New Point Online. My name is Brandy and I work at Campus Support here at New Point. We want you to know that this online service has been built with you in mind. So wherever, whenever, and however you are watching, welcome. We hope that something you see today really impacts you and inspires you to take a next step in your faith. We're so excited you're here. Let's get started. I've tried so hard to see it Took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it you take the broken things and raise them to glory you are my champion giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you've won i am who you say i am you crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it so let all the striving cease, yeah. Cause this is my victory. You are my champion. Giants fall and you stand undefeated. Every battle you crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth miracles start breaking out I have the authority yes I do oh, Jesus has given me
in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all you are my champion giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated By the power of your name I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered We're in this series called Going Viral. And here's what I want you to, to get and understand. Your faith was never meant to be private. Personal? Absolutely. Private? Never. Never. And so Paul tells us in Romans 1, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power unto salvation for everyone who believes. But here's what we have to understand. You talk to any business leader, you talk to any coach, the important thing is this, is that everybody is working from the same page. So you have to be all in. If you're not all in, you have sideways energy. You have people who get hurt. You get frustrated because you have unfulfilled potential, unfulfilled goals, unfulfilled vision. And so what they say is this, you have to embrace the vision the mission, the values, and the strategy. Now, here's what I know. Most Christians do not embrace that of Christ. Oh, we want to die and go to heaven, but embrace his vision, his mission, his values, his strategy. We're not really interested in that. And so what happens is we don't fulfill the potential that God has given us. We don't make the difference that we could make. We have sideways energy. And people get frustrated because we're not reaching our God-given potential. And I want to talk to you about that today because what happens is it is personal. And God wants it to go viral through you to your schools, to your, your neighborhood, to your community, to your workplace, to your family. But it can never be private then. If it remains private, it'll never go viral. And so... Paul tells us there's three things that we need to embrace if it's going to go viral personally and through you and me. I want to give them to you quickly. The first one is you got to share your life. You got to share your life. You got a story. If you know Jesus Christ, then your sins are forgiven. If you know Jesus Christ, then heaven is your home. If you know Christ, then you have him living within you. And Paul says, we not only shared the good news with you, we shared our very lives. You should never be ashamed of your story. You say, well, I've been divorced. Okay, I've had bankruptcy. Okay, I've had a DUI. Okay, all of that is a part of your story. And what happens is when you share your story, when you share your life and you say, but God has forgiven me, he's restored me, he's, he's, he's rebuilding me, he's renewing me, then you give hope to people because all of us, have messed up. And when we hear somebody's story of God's grace and God's power to be able to restore and rebuild, it gives us hope. That's part of discipleship, sharing your life story. What my life was before Christ, what my life was as I came to accept Christ, and what my life is now that I know Christ. That's what you want to do. The second area is to share new truths. You see, when you come and, and, and you uh, accept Jesus Christ, you get access to all of the truth that there is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, and so you begin to, to realize what real truth is. And by the way, Jesus said, when you know the truth, it'll what? It'll set you free. And so what is the new truth that we need to acknowledge and embrace and believe so that we can share with other people? Let me give you some of them. One is Jesus is the Messiah. He's the savior of the world. 
Peter was asked by Jesus, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And so there's only one Messiah, and that's Jesus Christ. That's the new truth. He died for your sins and my sins. Here's a second new truth. Jesus is the visible image of God. You know, many people say, I don't know what God is like. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Paul would say that Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. So you want to know what God is like? You look at Jesus because they're one. Here's the third truth. Jesus' characterization of sin. What do you think sin is? You know, we would say missing the mark. But Jesus would say that sin is this, not fulfilling the great commandment and the second command. And, and Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? There's 600 and some odd commands. And Jesus said, it's to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so sin is not fulfilling that. Now, how do you know if you love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind? You know how? You look at your horizontal relationships. Y'all Okay. If you're not loving people, you don't love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind. I don't care how often you go to church. I don't care how often you read your Bible. I don't care how often you pray. I don't care how often you give money. You don't love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind. Because how you authenticate your relationship with God is looking at your relationship with people. Are you okay on that? See, maybe that's why you struggle. Maybe that's why you're frustrated because you're not all in. You don't buy into his value, his vision, his mission, his strategy. And so if it harms somebody, it's sin. If, 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 it, if it harms me, doesn't do me any good, it's sin. If it harms somebody else, I need to condemn it. Because what we want is we want the very best for everyone. That's why we want to speak the truth in love. And love is speaking the truth. Let me give you the fourth one. The fourth one is Jesus will make things right. Oh, my lands. We live in a broken world, don't we? And we want justice, don't we? We want justice. And, and the fact of the matter is because we live in a, a broken world, we want justice and we want it now. And when you and I take justice into our hands, what happens is we end up destroying our communities society, because we do what we think is right and best. But here's what Jesus would say. He would say, vengeance is mine, not yours. So he would say, trust me. Trust me right now that I will bring justice to all people. You see, we're all going to give an account to God for everything that we've done in the body, both good and bad. Now, if, if you are a Christ follower, and you've accepted Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, but you're still going to have to give an account on how you lived your life. Did you buy into his vision? Did you buy into his mission? Did you buy into his strategy? Did you buy into his values? And you'll be judged by that. And, and, and so that's the new truth. Jesus is ultimately going to make everything right. My mom would say that this way, everything's going to come out in the wash, Dwight. God will take care of it. Let me give you the fifth thing, and that is Jesus reconciles us to God. Jesus reconciles us to God. For there is only one mediator between God and man, the person of Christ Jesus. So Jesus reconciles us to God. You say, what does it mean to be reconciled? It means to be made right. And the reason why this has to happen is because God is a God of justice. That's why you want things to be made right. And so God demands justice. So God demonstrated grace. And what he did is he came to earth as the second person of the Trinity, the son of God. And he lived a life that you and I could never live. He lived a perfect life. And so God laid on Jesus the punishment the justice of all of mankind. And then he died and then he conquered that. And now by accepting Jesus Christ, we're made right with God. No other way. Your good works won't do it. 
you can never be good enough to be reconciled to God. This is a new truth. It's only one person, and that's Jesus Christ. How about this, Will? Here's another thing that we need to acknowledge, believe, and embrace. The church is God's agent. The church is imperfect, okay? I'm sure you probably have been hurt by somebody in the church. I'm sure you've been frustrated, all of that, but it's the hope of the world living and teaching the truth of Jesus Christ. Jesus said it this way, I will build my church, my ecclesia. I will, I will build my group of people and they will minister. They will, they will live out my truth. It will become the hope of the world, living and teaching the truth of Jesus Christ. And so I need to belong to a church. I need to be, belong to a group of like-minded people who buy into the vision, the mission, the strategy, and the values of Jesus Christ so that we can spread hope and we can bring healing to people. Here's the seventh one. Jesus followers make disciples. Yep, Jesus followers make disciples. And so if, if that's a new truth. See, you're, you're not here to live for yourself. You're here to live for other people now. That's the truth. And so we're called to make disciples of other people. What we learned last week, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So go therefore to make what? Disciples. If you're truly following Jesus, if it's going to go viral, you personally have to be making disciples and sharing this new truth that you have learned. And then finally, Here's the last thing that I wanna share with you. These are the essential things. The gospels are reliable accounts of actual events. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell us the story of Jesus Christ. And, and, and you have to believe that. They're verified, okay, that these things really happen. And that's what we build our life on because they share with us the, the, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's what we build our faith upon. You see, when the church was born, the Bible, as you and I know it, wasn't even assembled. It was built upon the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so that's where we go to. And then they assembled what you and I know as the Bible about 300 years later. And so we need to share our life. We need to share this new truth these things, these essential things that I shared. And then finally, we need to share new habits. We need to share new habits. You say, what are those new habits? You see, when you come to Christ, the way in which you deal with habits, especially old habits that are not helpful, you have to replace a bad habit with a good habit. Otherwise, you'll never conquer the bad habit. So here's five habits that a Christ follower does personally, and it helps you to go viral with your faith. Number one, you spend time in God's word, in God's word, because this is how we learn. This is how we grow. This is how we get strength. Secondly, you pray. Pray is the connection to God. Prayer can do anything. You know why? Because God can do anything. And then the third thing is you tithe. Uh-oh, yeah, you tithe. You give 10%. Je Jesus said, unless you give up all, all your possessions, you cannot be my disciples. And how can you say that you've given up all your possessions if you won't even give 10% of your money to God? And so you teach that, and that's a way in which you learn how to trust God. Because here's what I know about you, money's really important to you, really important. And for most people, it's more important than their relationship with God. And so what happens is they don't learn to trust God because you haven't learned to trust them with what you would consider the most important thing in your life. Let me give you the fourth way. That is you practice a Sabbath. Do you know that God gave us a day of rest? That's how good he is, okay? He says, you shall work six days a week, but on the seventh day, you will rest because he knows how he's made you and me. And what happens is he's saying, everybody else may work seven days a week, but I want you to trust me that I'll bless you so much that I can bless you more in six days than you can get in seven days. And your family and friends and your coworkers will be asking you about that because that's not normal. And you can say, you know what? This is the new truth. This is the new habit that I've established. And in that day of rest, that Sabbath, you know what you do? You grow your relationships. You rest your body, your mind, you reconnect with God. And then the last one is this, you develop the habit of fellowship. 
That means that you meet with a group of people on a regular basis. You know why? Because you need support. You need to be loved. You need to be prayed for. You need to be held accountable. You need somebody who believes in you. And, and you need somebody to love you through the, 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 the hard, difficult days of life because life isn't fair. And so I leave you with this. It's personal. It's not private. If it's private, you're religious. You're not following Jesus. Jesus said, those who are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of them. And so for it to go viral, we have to make it personal. We gotta share our story, our life. We gotta share the new truth that we have acknowledged and embraced and believed. And then we gotta share the new habits that causes us to grow and develop. Why? Because Jesus makes life better and he makes us better at life. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you that somebody did this for us. Somebody shared their life. Somebody shared the new truth. Somebody shared new habits. And because of that, we've never been the same. And God, I pray that we would do this with our family, our friends. If we have kids, that we would be sharing this with our kids. We'd be sharing this with our coworkers. We'd be sharing it with our golf buddies. We'd be sharing it with the, the women that we play cards with. Or, or, or that we do life with, because this is what life is all about. And so help us to share our life, help us to share these new truths that sets us free, and help us to share the new habits that will bring life and life to the fullest. And we pray it in Christ's name, amen. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope something you heard today has inspired you to follow Jesus, maybe for the first time or maybe to grow more in your relationship with him by taking a next step in your faith journey. And if you've been around New Point much at all, you've probably noticed that next steps are a big deal around here. If you're ready to take your next step or would just like to learn more, visit newpoint.org slash next step. And while you're there, check out our in-person and online options for Discover New Point. It's another great place to learn more about taking your next step. If you made a decision for Jesus today or just need to talk to someone, we'd love to hear about it. And we want to be there for you. Feel free to reach out to us through a DM, comment below, or by visiting our website at newpoint.org slash contact us. We hope something from today has impacted and inspired you. If so, would you share it with a friend? This service and the ministry of New Point is only made possible thanks to the generosity of others. So if you would like to partner with us in inspiring people to follow Jesus, visit newpoint.org slash give or download our mobile app and give there. And if you already give, we want to thank you for that. Your faithful giving is making an incredible impact. To see more content like this, please follow us on our social channels and like and subscribe to keep up to date with everything New Point. Once again, thank you for joining us today. We hope you have a great week and we can't wait to see you again next time.